Have you ever wondered how crucial lubrication is in engineering? It's not just about making things slick and smooth. Lubrication is a science, a pivotal element in the world of engineering that keeps our machines running efficiently and effectively. Today, we're going to explore the fascinating world of lubrication, delving into its principles and types. Now, let's begin with a seemingly simple concept, surfaces. You see, surfaces at a microscopic level are not as smooth as they appear to our naked eye. They have tiny irregularities called asperities. Imagine these asperities like mini mountains and valleys on a terrain. During the running in phase of a machine, these asperities break off, mixing with oil anti-wear additives to form a toughened coating. This process lays the foundation for what we call boundary lubrication, a critical line of defense against metal-to-metal -metal contact. Now that we've set the stage, let's dive into the intriguing world of lubrication. First off, let's delve into the concept of boundary lubrication. This operates under the principle that surfaces, even those that appear smooth to the naked eye, reveal a different story under a microscopic lens. They are, in fact, a landscape of peaks and valleys known as asperities. During the wear-in or running-in phase, these asperities often break off and mingle with oil anti-wear additives, forming a toughened coating. This is the birth of boundary lubrication. Picture it as a microscopic battlefield where the toughened coating of oil and additives forms a protective shield, guarding the base metal from direct contact with other metals. Now, what makes this coating so resilient? The secret lies in the metal sulfides, usually derived from additives such as zinc dialkyldithiophosphates, or ZDDP for short, and extreme pressure, or EP additives. These metal sulfides are actually harder than the base metal, giving the coating its robustness and durability. This boundary layer is crucial because it's our last line of defense against full-blown metal-to-metal contact, which could lead to excessive wear and tear or even catastrophic failure. Remember, every machine relies on the smooth and efficient operation of its moving parts, and boundary lubrication is a key player in ensuring this. However, it's not the only player in the game. As conditions change, other types of lubrication come into play, like mixed and fluid lubrication, but we'll get into those in a bit. For now, it's essential to remember that boundary lubrication is like the trusty goalkeeper in a football match. It might not always be an action, but when it's called upon, it can save the day by preventing metal-to-metal -metal contact. Thus, boundary lubrication serves as our last line of defense against detrimental metal-to-metal -metal contact. It's the unsung hero of the lubrication world, quietly doing its job to ensure our machines run smoothly and efficiently. And that, my friends, is the beauty of boundary lubrication. Moving on, let's unravel the mystery of mixed lubrication. Picture this, a surfer on a wave. The surfer, much like the rotating shaft in a plane or journal bearing, rides the wave, making use of the fluid beneath. In our engineering world, this wave is a wedge of oil. The shaft scrapes the oil as it moves, riding this oil wave just as a surfer does. This is the concept of mixed lubrication. Now, what happens when conditions improve? The surfer rides smoother, faster, and with less effort. Similarly, in our mechanical systems, improved conditions lead to a transition from mixed lubrication to full fluid lubrication, a state where the surfaces are entirely separated by a lubricating film, significantly reducing friction and wear. But what does improved conditions mean in this context? It could be a higher speed, increased oil viscosity or greater pressure, all leading to an enhanced lubricating film. The thicker this film, the better the surfaces are protected from direct contact and potential damage. So, from our surfer battling the choppy waves, we move to a serene setting where the surfer smoothly glides along a perfect wave. But remember, this transition doesn't happen by chance. It is a result of carefully considered and controlled conditions within our mechanical systems. From mixed to fluid lubrication, we see how conditions can improve and lead to less wear and tear. But it's important to note that this is a dynamic process. The system constantly adapts to changes in load, speed and temperature, shifting between mixed and fluid lubrication as needed. This flexibility is what makes lubrication such an integral part of mechanical systems. It's not just about reducing friction or preventing wear, it's about enabling the system to operate efficiently under a wide range of conditions. So the next time you see a surfer riding a wave, think about the fascinating world of mixed and fluid lubrication. It's a world where engineering meets nature, 
where science and art converge to keep our mechanical systems running smoothly and efficiently. We have already touched on full fluid lubrication, but a key member of this category is hydrodynamic lubrication. The surface shaft and wave oil film example still applies here. As the shaft moves, it scrapes the oil, forming a wedge to surf on. The right balance of viscosity, pressure, load and speed achieve full fluid lubrication. The surfaces in motion don't actually meet ever, and the oil forms a protective film that prevents direct contact. This is the ideal scenario in lubrication, as it minimizes wear and tear. Now, let's transition to hydrostatic lubrication. Picture a system at rest, perhaps during startup. The oil, obeying the laws of gravity, sinks to the bottom. The only thing protecting the components from metal-to-metal -metal contact at this stage is boundary lubrication. But wouldn't it be great if we could cheat gravity? That's where hydrostatic lubrication comes into play. Instead of waiting for the system to generate enough motion to establish hydrodynamic lubrication, hydrostatic lubrication uses a pump to force oil into the system. This action pushes the bearing away from the outer shell, creating an oil film that prevents contact even before the system starts moving. This preemptive approach ensures that the components are protected from the get-go, overcoming the challenges of startup conditions. So, in essence, hydrodynamic lubrication is like the perfect wave that the surfer, or the moving parts of the system, rides on during operation. On the other hand, Hydrostatic lubrication is like having a wave machine that ensures there's always a wave to ride on, even when the seas or the system is still. Both hydrodynamic and hydrostatic lubrication play crucial roles in maintaining the integrity of mechanical systems. They work together to ensure that the components of the system are adequately lubricated, reducing friction, minimizing wear, and prolonging the life of the system. With hydrodynamic and hydrostatic lubrication, we're able to overcome some of the challenges of gravity and startup conditions. It's time to delve into the factors that influence lubrication film thickness. Imagine the oil film as a protective barrier between two metal surfaces. The thickness of this film is determined by a number of key factors, and understanding these can help us choose the right lubrication method for each application. First up, we have viscosity. Picture this. The oil is like a thick syrup. The thicker the oil, the more it resists flowing away from the gap between the two metals. So, higher viscosity means a thicker film, which offers better protection against wear and tear. Next, let's talk about pressure. When pressure is applied, it forces the oil into the gap between the metals. The higher the pressure, the thicker the oil film, which again means better protection. Now let's consider speed. As the speed increases, the moving surface constantly scrapes oil in front of it to ride on, leaving no time for the oil to move away. This keeps the film thick, like a surfer riding a wave, constantly pushing water in front of them. However, too much speed can be a bad thing. In contrast to what we've just discussed, an increase in speed can actually reduce film thickness by increasing heat and reducing viscosity. Imagine the surfer again. If they go too fast, they'll outrun the crest of the wave and find themselves in thin water. Lastly, we have load. A higher load tends to squeeze out the oil, leading to a thinner film, so lower loads are preferable for maintaining a thicker oil film. To put it all together, a high viscosity, high pressure, high speed and low load will give you a thicker film thickness. On the other hand, a low viscosity, low pressure, low speed and high load will result in a thinner film. In reality, most situations will fall somewhere in between these extremes, with a mix of conditions leading to a film thickness that is just right for the job at hand. Understanding these factors is crucial in determining the right lubrication method for each application. In the world of roller bearings, we encounter elastohydrodynamic lubrication. This fascinating lubrication process happens when the contact point of the bearing sits on a high pressure blob of lubricant. Imagine this. The pressure is so immense that it reaches about 500,000 pounds per square inch. At such enormous pressure, the lubricant behaves in a peculiar way. It solidifies. Yes, you heard that right. The lubricant turns into a solid. But this is no ordinary solid. It's a solid that's continuously reshaping and reforming under the relentless pressure and motion of the bearing. This solid lubricant is the unsung hero that prevents metal-to-metal -metal contact from occurring within the roller bearing. It's a dynamic process, constantly adapting to the changing conditions within the bearing. 
This unique form of lubrication is what keeps our roller bearings running smoothly. As we wrap up, let's revisit the key points we've covered. We started off by discussing the principles of lubrication, emphasizing the microscopic roughness of surfaces, the asperities, and how they interact with oil anti-wear additives to create a toughened coating during the running in or wear in phase. This forms boundary lubrication, a last line of defense against direct metal to metal contact. Next, we delved into mixed lubrication. Here we likened the shaft rotating in a plane or journal bearing to a surfer riding a wave as it scrapes and rides the wedge of oil. With improved conditions, this evolves into full fluid lubrication. We then explored the concept of hydrodynamic lubrication, where the surfaces do not meet, and hydrostatic lubrication, where a pump is used to force oil into the system to prevent metal-to-metal -metal contact. We also looked at the factors influencing film thickness, which include viscosity, pressure, and speed. We discussed how a high viscosity, high pressure, and high speed result in a thicker film thickness, while low viscosity, low pressure, low speed, and a high load contribute to a thinner film. Finally, we touched on elastohydrodynamic lubrication, which occurs in roller bearings. Here, the contact point sits on a high-pressure blob of lubricant, which solidifies under extreme pressure, preventing metal-to-metal -metal contact. In summary, understanding the different types of lubrication and the factors that influence film thickness is crucial for engineers and lubricant professionals. These concepts are not just theoretical but have practical applications in the real world. They inform how we design and maintain our machinery, helping us to minimize wear and tear and extend the life of our equipment. With this knowledge, we can make informed decisions in our engineering endeavors, ensuring smooth operations and long-lasting equipment. We hope you found this video helpful and feel free to like, comment, subscribe and tell a friend or just visit us on learnoilanalysis.com for many more videos, articles, and useful tools in the world of oil analysis and lubrication.